all right what up everybody i know you guys been wanting this one it's the show for beat breakdown so let's get into this <laughs> Like I do with a lot of my hip hop beats, I start with the I start with the drums just so I can get a little bit of a groove started. So I start I started with the hi hats and it was just a normal four on the floor. And then I like to go into the claps just so I have a little groove going in my head. I can start building the rest of the song. Once I did that, I thought it'd be right to start bringing in some kick. So I have a little bit of a beat started at this point. Then, then you just start adding in on some more drums. And so I put in another snare and like the in-betweens, it helps you give a swing, a little bit of a groove, a little bit more just uh, excitement in the track. And to just put in a little bit more sp spice into it, I put some hi-hat rolls. When I started listening to the beat over and over again, I started thinking of a melody that would suit this. I took a sample and I pretty much just started looping it, but very quickly. So on a one eighth, I just did turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. You can hear that on this. It's a but with a lot of effects on it, I have I have a filter on it, I have a chorus on it, I have a I have a reverb on it, so it sounds really really wet, but without taking away from the element of an arp. So that with the drums it sounds like this. Right after that, I added some 808s, because that's what we do. To talk about this one clap on here on the fourth that creates more of a sound, all I did was I took the same clap I had um, on my normal drums, added it to another track, and added some reverb on it. That way, it, it, it moves the track a little bit more faster. It moves it, it gives a little bit more excitement to the beat rather than just being a loop. And then right after that, as soon as that one hit comes, I added a one knob pumper, which is a side chain, but I started it after uh, like once the one beat hit. So that way it gives you this effect. I came to the chorus and I felt like I needed something to spice up the beat now. So I got a flute played and this was the melody I wanted them to do, and they give me that. That what the sample now becomes. Add the drums with it too. this is pretty much the whole beat that runs throughout the whole song and then I brought my boy Sandy in to uh, give the choruses a little bit more effect give the verses a little bit more uh, sparkle just so they don't start they don't start sounding the same throughout the record come the first Tory hook I brought Sandy in to give me a little bit of a swell into the hook that's fully sharp and in a, in a, on a Juno chord
just having chords like that gives the song mystery, gives the song a little bit of more of a life. Whereas we have the whole hip hop, uh, we all we have the whole hip hop drums. We have, um, you know, a sample running. This gives it a little bit more um, energy, at least for me. Um, this helped me kind of like separate the hook from the verse uh, or else everything else is the same and it wouldn't sound too much different. So this gives it a little bit more energy and really changes the whole record. So since Tori repeats his verse twice, I wanted to give the second uh, part of the eight bars of the hook a little bit more of an effect as well. So I, I got Sandy to play um, a subtle lead at the back. That would everything else sounds like this. When it came to the third verse, I really wanted to spice it up a little bit just because it's the last verse. So I wanted to bring something really cool, something different from the rest of the song um, into the groove. And Sandy made the perfect choice of putting in a Moog bass, uh, a Moog bass there. And that really made the whole thing shift. It's, that alone sounded like this. But with everything else... When the whole song is going on one beat, one rhythm, uh, you know, it's going on its own key. This one comes out of nowhere and gives it a different feel on the song. And it raises it back into the root of key of the song. <laughs> After that, we started adding a bunch of, you know, effects around the song. Explosions, car engines, just to give it a little bit more of a groove. Uh, and the uh, hype when when things drop they 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 add emphasis you know they add a lot of um movement to the song uh, the first one right uh, right off the top is an explosion that comes in that explosion really to me is kind of like you know when when we go to a hip hop concert um, you know, when the beat drops or when they finish the record, you know, they'll have an explosion, they'll have, you know, glass breaking, sirens going on. It, it, it's it's a, it's an effect that you use live, but I wanted to put it in the record just to make it a little bit more hype. Um, right before the first hook comes, I add a car driving by, you know, it gives, instead of using a riser in the record, I used this kind of as a riser and it just gives you a really fat and quick um, to the point type of effect. Um, and a lot of shouts, a lot of woos, a lot of faucet drops. That was really cool. Um, one thing I really like to put in my records is um, the burras and, you know, hoes and stuff. And because I'm, I'm a Bhangra producer, so for, for me to still put something like that in this record was going to be difficult. But, you know, when I started adding all these effects, making it more hype, it be like I put it in my head that, you know, this is something that we could probably put in there. So when I tried to do it, it worked out really well. It's short, but it's, you know, you can tell that this is my Pangra shout, and with everything else, it just sounds amazing. It's just another part of, you know, my music that I feel like I got to carry a couple things from uh, records that make me a little bit of a, a known producer. So that really helps me, you know, put a little bit of my signature in every beat. Uh, whether it's this, sometimes you use the John Jira, sometimes I use this, sometimes I use that. Beyond just the man like Iggy Tag. Um, yeah. And so then when we came to how do I want to start the record? Because the record was starting with just the beat right off the top. How I want to start the record, how I want to end the record. I really felt like since we we're doing this on a very much bigger scale, I should still take the assets I've been using uh, on my other records and just, you know, bring that up there. So that's where I brought my brother Sandy in and, you know, let's go to him and see what he's got for us. All right, so what up everybody? Now we're here with Sandy. And Sandy worked with me to do all the melodies, to do the chords, to do, you know, the special intro, the special outro. 
Um, so we went through some, you know, some VSTs. We went through some real uh, instruments. We went through the Mo. We went through the Juno. Did we go through the Juno? Yeah, yeah, Juno. Yeah. Juno um, a bunch of Omnisphere, uh, some Rhodes and stuff like that. So we were able to create um, more than just a hip hop track. You know, we were able to, you know, add some more chords in it, add some more different stuff in it, add some more, like, you know, like a, a song that keeps rising into something. I brought Sandy in slowly by slowly. As soon as you hear the intro and then it goes into the beat, there's no more, like, uh, you know, instrumentation going on. There's just one loop on a melody. But as as the the further the song goes, Sandy keeps bringing something new in. We got you know slowly the Mog bass comes in, slowly some chords coming, and then you go into this um, huge ending. Uh, so we'll start with the intro. Um, we only had two layers for the intro. We had you know the Rhodes and the synth melody that he had you know just sent to me a year ago just for loops. Uh, but I ended up you know using using it in the beginning of this song. So so we started with the Rhodes um, that went a little bit like this. And I wanted to give those um, chords a little bit of melody, so I asked Sandy to put a little something synthy on it, and it went a little something like this. So once that that intro melody is finished, it goes straight into um, the drop or the beat, um, and then we lose Sandy for that little while until the chorus, until the second hook is about to come. So that's where we start to bring a little bit of uh, some Juno chord swells, and the swell kind of just it's like a was it a lo-fi filter or a high no sorry a low cut or a high cut filter that you use it's just a low cut filter just a low cut filter synth. yeah you just sweep it up yeah so then you know he just manually sweeped it up on the Juno so by the time it went from the verse to the hook like the the verse is like sounds like a pad but then once you get to the the hook it's like a big synth big lead um, so that sounds like this. One thing that adds to this, like, even though the record's got an 808 going on, we still have a lower octave of the, the Juno still there. You know what I'm saying? Because the 808 is just hearing that one boom, boom. But the Juno kind of brings in a little bit more notes, like, da, da, da. you know what I'm saying? Like, that was a really cool part for me. Um, but then also, the hook has two parts of it. It's like, you know, it's, it's the same hook, but it repeats twice. So I wanted the second part to sound a little bit more um, cinematic as well. So that's when we went into the the lead uh it's like very you know at the back but it, it it really adds on to the song um so here's what that sounds like yeah so then what i did i put through i put through this lead through just actually just a reverb and it just created a lot of, you know, pre-delay sound. So it just shifted things from just being a straight line into the computer into something a little bit more spacious. It sounds like this. So we kept the same arrangement for the first verse on the second verse as well. Um, and then we went into uh, the third verse. And I wanted to start it differently from the loop just going on the way it was before. So we started with the bass. Um, and this is what it sounded like as soon as he comes into the third verse. That like on its own just created its own groove. Um, and then I wanted to keep that like element of the bass alive until the hook came back in. Um, and since I had different elements before each hook and the first hook, I had like a shout second hook I had like a car driving by third hook I wanted to do something different and I was like, we'll keep that same element of the bass um, And that's when he played the the little fill of the bass 
that going into the song sounded like this and it was like the perfect fill into the last hook. All right, so we started with uh, the same Juno chord swells, but instead of it being continuous, it had a groove to it. Um, here's how that goes. So I need one, two, three, four. Yeah, so right after the, the, the Juno chords, you know, uh, you've got this Wava melody. What's what's that created from? Uh, it's just like another road sound from Keyscape. Sounds good, yeah. So we layered that on top of the Juno, chord, Juno chords, and this is what that sounds like. And then just to you know, fill up the little space at the top of the song. Uh, you know, we just put in a light pad, went a little something like this. There's like two parts to this peak and like it's pretty much like the first four bars, um, the first eight bars are kind of like there are a climax, but they're still climaxing, like they're still peeking into something else. Mm. Um, so what I did was I took both the vocals of Doji and Torian, um, put a shit ton of reverb around them and kind of had them like phasing in and out of the song. And then also, you know, added this filtered uh, drum beat. That way it's, together it sounded like this. <laughs> So it went from that into then becoming completely um, analog, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's where you brought in the Moog bass. So one thing I missed um, was the same uh, the 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 big Juno synth we had, you know, running throughout the track, like it got it went missing for the that first four parts of the ending as well, um, you know. So you, to build up to the next part. So once we came into like this this the Moog part as well, uh, we brought back those big Juno endings, and that's what it sounded like with this. <laughs> Then we ended off with, you know, the big melody, uh, the solo, and, you know, all he did was ask me to put on the delay, and that kind of, how does it sound without the delay? Can we just get a little? Yeah. Yeah, and then with the delay, just kind of give a whole new vibe to it, want something like this. So there's like a longer tail there, you know what I'm saying? So that was it, that's me and Sandy. Uh, Doji, Tori, um, this is Chauffeur, this is his Moog, this is Zicky, this is Sandy, and <laughs> <laughs> we're <a> wrapped. <laughs> <laughs>